Good afternoon, everyone. This is the story of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and the cave. About 1900 years ago, in the days of the Roman Empire, there lived in the land of Israel a rabbi named Shimon Bar Yochai, a very smart rabbi, but mm, a little impulsive, maybe even some anger management issues. Well, Shimon Bar Yochai one time was sitting in the marketplace with his friends and colleagues talking about politics as one does. And his friend, another rabbi said, you know, I love the Roman Empire. I'm so appreciative for everything they've done. This fantastic market, all the bridges, the roads, the aqueducts. It's great. Rabbi Shimon was horrified, jumped to his feet and said, what? How can you say you love the Roman Empire? They're horrible. They destroyed our beloved temple. And they only built these markets and roads and bridges to make it easier to collect taxes. I, I hate the Roman Empire. Well, as fate would have it, nearby, one of their students who overheard this conversation was in fact a spy for the Roman Empire. And before the sun had set, word was out on the street that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was to be brought up on charges of treason against the empire, which carried with it, of course, a death penalty. So his students ran to him and said, Rabbi Shimon, you must escape. You must hide yourself. Rabbi Shimon fled to a cave up in the mountains, not close to any village, and spent the night in the cave. But you know, Rabbi Shimon discovered was actually okay in the cave. It was quiet, it was peaceful. Rabbi Shimon said to himself, you know, nobody's bothering me here. I can finally catch up on my reading and do all the studying I always wanted to do. So Rabbi Shimon started studying Torah and God was mighty pleased by this, caused a carob tree to grow right in front of the mouth of the cave, and there was a spring of delicious fresh water. Now, carob and water may not sound like anything great to you, but to Rabbi Shimon, this was like manna from heaven. And he ate carob, drank sweet water, studied Torah all day long until the sun set. Well, went on like this for a week, a month, several months in the cave. But Rabbi Shimon was actually kind of happy in the cave. After a year, Rabbi Shimon knew the Torah by heart. After two years, Rabbi Shimon could recite the Torah backwards. After three years in the cave, Rabbi Shimon could recite the Torah backwards while standing on his head. After six years in the cave, Rabbi Shimon understood the mystical significance of the white spaces in between the black letters. After 12 years in the cave, Rabbi Shimon, his eyes burned with little white flames. He could see in the dark and study Torah all night long. He was able to every night ascend to the highest heavens and dance across the Red Sea with Miriam and with Moses. At this point, Elijah the prophet himself came to the mouth of the cave and said, Rabbi Shimon, you can come out now. The, the sentence against you, it's, it's, it's been lifted. You're free to go. Elijah took Reb Shimon by the arm and brought him out to the cave of the cave and, and down to a field where there were were were, were Israelites uh, people people uh, just gathering together uh, uh, some were baking cookies others were gathering flowers um, and Rabbi Shimon became infuriated he said to the people what are you doing I just spent twelve years in a cave studying Torah. You, you're free to do whatever you like. You're, you're just out here baking 
cookies and, and picking flowers. And he, as he looked at them, flames shot out of his eyes like, like lasers, setting cookies on fire and flowers on fire and fields on fire. Everyone went running and screaming in horror. But Elijah the prophet took Reb Shimon by the arm and said, Reb Shimon Bar Yochai, I don't think you're ready to leave the cave yet. You've learned to control the forces of nature, the mystical secrets of the universe, but you've not yet learned to control your own temper, the mystical secrets of your soul. Reb Shimon went back to the cave, but still was angry, was so angry thinking about all of the things that he had missed while sitting in the cave. Weddings of friends, celebrations, funerals. The anger just poured out of him and he didn't know what to do with it. So he just started to write all day long, all night long. He wrote, he wrote about the mystical secrets that had been revealed to him and and, and what it meant for his soul and what he was trying to do. The, the, the flames shot out of his pen like white fire onto the paper, black fire onto the paper. And when he finally set the last word to paper, he felt a great weight lifted from his shoulders. And he said to himself, I think I'm ready to leave the cave took his book under his arm and stepped out into the field where he again saw the villagers picking flowers and making cookies and he didn't know what to think. He felt the anger rising in him again, but he took control of himself. He walked over to the people and he said, why? Why are you making cookies and picking flowers when you could be studying Torah? One person said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm making these cookies because they were my grandmother's recipe and she's, she's become too old to, to cook for herself now, but it, it makes her so happy to eat these cookies. And so I learned the recipe so I could bring them to her and together we sit together and we eat these cookies and we celebrate Shabbat. I, I'm not a great Torah scholar, but I've gotten good at baking cookies. And another person said, well, you know, I'm, I'm picking these flowers because they are beautiful and they remind us of the beauty of God's creation as we celebrate Shabbat. I, I, I love to celebrate Shabbat in a beautiful place like this. And, and even though my home is so simple and small, bringing in these flowers makes our whole family feel, feel like, we're, like we're in Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden. We're, we're simple people. We don't know a lot of Torah, but we know that that's what you're supposed to do on Shabbat. Rabbi Shimon felt the anger disappearing and said, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at studying Torah, but I know nothing about baking cookies or about flowers. And one family said, well, come to our house and bake cookies with us and, 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 and you can sit in our beautiful home and celebrate Shabbat with us. So Rabbi Shimon followed them to their home and had a Shabbat dinner that couldn't be beat and spent the evening teaching the words of Torah that were from his own book, the Zohar. You, you can read this book yourself if you want. And that night, Rabbi Shimon learned a lesson that he hadn't even learned in all those years in the cave. He learned that you can be a great Torah scholar and a, and a great teacher, but the most important thing is to learn how to control yourself. I hope that all of us, as we spend all this time in our spaces, working to try to get better at things. Know that when we step back out, 
It's not our place to judge the others. Let's all work together to, uh, to make things better for each other, however we've grown. Take good care, my friends. <laughs>